I don't watch Colbert that much just because I don't watch late night TV. Uh, but uh, I, if I did watch uh, late night TV, I would probably watch Colbert. Uh, he's Out always of all been, of them? Yeah, he's always yeah. been a, uh, a favorite of mine. Um, this guy has always been a very political person. Um, and um, I would not ever host uh lynn cheney is it lynn cheney? Liz, liz. liz cheney liz cheney or lynn cheney <laughs> lynn I is her mother i wouldn't host either one sam of them. has flipped tails on that guest that 50 50 guest maybe like 30 times i literally oh, yeah. asked i literally asked bradley this morning is it liz or lynn i can't i know I can't, there's some things i just don't want to remember yeah and uh i would never have her as a guest and uh but I do think that there is value uh, of Colbert here, having her as a guest on and trying to make the point that, like, you know, you never Trumpers, you're really like Trump, except for you're just not Trump. And that is a, a point that I think has uh, managed to elide the uh, consciousness of too many people who would vote against Trump. I mean, that's on purpose by the Democrats, unfortunately, because they're an incompetent party, but they keep trying to draw distinctions between the Republican Party and the MAGA extremists. And it's completely MAGA counterproductive to their own interests. Yeah. Here is uh, Colbert trying to hold uh, Liz Cheney to account uh, for that. And, you know, good for him. Yeah. There are left wing dictators. Yeah. And there are right wing dictators. Yeah. There are there are communists and socialist dictators who will go to any means and any amount of people have to die or be trampled in order to achieve whatever freedom for the proletariat. And then there are fascist dictators, right wing dictators who, in the name of preserving some imagined status quo or some imagined past that needs to be returned to, will go to any lengths and any, anyone needs to be trampled or, or killed in order to achieve that. So I'm not saying that it is, it is the purview of one party. Why do you think, though, for the first time in our nation's history, the Republican Party won that race and got the first fascist dictator who could possibly take office? I'm just curious if you've done any self-examination of your party's leadership over the last 20 years no. as to why he is not an aberration, but rather an avatar. Pause it. I just want to just I, I like remind you, uh, youngins, uh, if you uh, look back 20 years ago, uh, guess who was the vice president? Yeah. And uh, many people considered uh, that vice president to be sort of like running the show. As Did he were. overreach in his power and his authority in terms of uh, his role as vice president? Well, a lot of people say, uh, you know, where did this unitary executive yeah. theory come from? They well, it came from a guy named Dick Cheney Deep when State he Dick. was uh, yep. chief of staff of uh, Richard Nixon. Nixon. Yeah. And uh, then came on to be then he uh, led the vice presidential search committee for George W. Bush. And oddly enough, it he found up? himself. Yeah. But uh, be that as it may. And Go also, ahead. I would just say uh, people who are a bit more authoritarian in nature or who are far right to, to use uh, some of, of the framing of, of, of what Colbert says there, they tend to also kill a lot of people. And her father was instrumental in the illegal invasion and war in Iraq, which killed up to a million people by some counts. Yep. 100%. So. And um, here is... Uh, uh, Colbert basically saying, what about your dad? Without uh, not so many words. As to why he is not an aberration, but rather an avatar. I, I think he's an aberration. Um, I think uh, really? that, yeah, I mean, I, look, I think what Donald Trump has done is, first of all, he, he tapped into a sense among a lot of people in this country that their voice isn't heard. Um, but he then lied to them and he preyed on their patriotism and he told them, you know what, I'll speak for you. Um, but very specifically <laughs> through things like preyed on their patriotism. Every Paul, every Republican. <laughs> I just want to like. Well, he said Colbert is about. Oh, to okay, really? All right, I'm sorry, yeah, but yeah, it's just back. it's patriotism more like bigotry. It, that's exactly. Um, where. But he then lied to them and he preyed on their patriotism and he told them, you know what, I'll speak for you. Um, but very and, specifically through things like. Racism, like Mexicans yeah. are rapists, they're killers, they're here to get us. That's, like, that's, that's, that's a very I, racist ideology. Absolutely. And, and undermining one of, the of the media. One, that's, a very, that's a very fascist thing look, to do. There's no question that he's using a fascist playbook. Right. Um, but 
it's also true right now if you want to talk about you know uh for example the the but pause just one second just to dwell on like the notion of playbooks for a second like if i run like the spurs playbook and my team has a real good success for it it probably means the pers personnel was set up to run that playbook mm. pretty well i think like if trump ran a playbook a fascist playbook why was the republican party so able to execute that playbook? listen it was um we we sat on this program in the summer of 2016 when he announced um or i should say the summer of 2015 when he announced this guy has a very good shot at winning the republican primary i will uh, definitely concede that i did not think that he would win in the general election but uh i was saying this guy is going to get on that stage with all the other republicans and blow them off because the the republican party had created essentially a um a, a suit and it was perfectly tailored to someone like uh like donald trump and uh and her she, dad was the tailor well <laughs> Her dad was was, was very much about the fabric. Yeah, I mean, about he, the fabric. He's like he's uh, the tailor and all yeah, of it. Yeah. And uh, but guess where she's going to go with here? What is? How is she going to re respond to the idea that w your party seemed to really respond to all of this racism? And well, of course, here she's going to go with. Can anybody guess? Go. Talk about you know, uh, for example, the the disgusting anti-Semitism that is on the rise across this country. The left has a huge problem with anti-Semitism and what we're seeing on our university campuses, for example, well, and, and the unwillingness to stand against it. This is so, never I would agree yes. that anti-Semitism, a disease that runs across all cultural boundaries, not only in the United States, but across the world. Right. But what, what, I, what, I, what I mean by, say, undermining the media is no, I'm, I'm, un, un, right. under, undercutting, sort of like roughing up the referee was a project of the right for the last 20 years, or undermining yeah, public institutions. You, no. you say that people believe that our public institutions can take the punishment that Trump will give them, and that's why he's not as dangerous as he should be, but I mean, the Republican Party's mantra has been the government is the problem for so many years. Yeah, but mm. see, this is, it's really important, um, in my view, that we not sort of slide into saying everything the Republicans have ever done you know, uh, is somehow the same as what Donald Trump is doing. I'm not saying everything. I'm and, saying and it, it is, not, those are breadcrumbs. Yeah, but I, I think you and I are just not going to agree on that. I mean, I think it's... I, I think, know we're not going to agree, but do you but understand I, why I'm asking that question? Yeah, but I think you should let me answer it. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, no, I, look, I think that um, when I stood in front of my colleagues, for example, when they kicked me out of leadership, um, I said to them, you know, we cannot become the party of anti-Semitism and white supremacy and racism and bigotry. And if you look at the people uh, and the symbolism that the people had who invaded the Capitol on January 6th, they had neo-Nazi insignia. The Confederate uh, right, flag. Right, pause. I mean, it, listen, there is something called the Southern strategy. There is something called uh, LBJ saying we're going to lose the South for uh, decades after the uh, Voting Rights Act. Uh, and the Civil Rights Act. I mean, this is all complete revisionist history. Where did Reagan launch his campaign? In uh, in uh, um, in uh, oh, uh, Mississippi. Uh, yes, yeah. where uh, the specifically just by the Neshoba County yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, fair, where um, uh, you know uh, the the you had uh, civil rights workers, three civil rights workers uh, 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 killed, um, but and and also launched it. We should say. In that general election, on the uh, the idea of states', states rights, rights yep. which of course was uh, not too subtle code. But just in case you forget, and I don't think that Colbert uh, felt it appropriate to bring this up, here is the very reasonable non-Trumpy um, uh, Lynn or Liz Cheney. I can never Liz, remember Liz, Liz, Liz. Cheney. <laughs> In uh, in 2019, before she started thinking like uh, maybe uh, you know I need to I want to sell a book some distance, which is what uh, she's doing by the way on the yeah. Colbert show. Yeah, and that's also why or she's floating that she's going to run for president. She's not going to run for president. Oh yeah, she's selling a book, and here she is on 2019. Just in case you, for even a second, want to uh, glorify her or uh, raise her stature, here's just how decrepit of a person she is. 
sure that every American understands what today's Democrat Party stands for with respect to babies and with respect to the murder of babies. Uh, we have seen now in states across the country the introduction of legislation uh, that would enable the killing of babies. This is not about abortion. This is about killing babies after they are born. Uh, and it is the face of pure evil. And you've seen the leadership of the Democrat Party here on the Hill remain silent, remain silent while elected leaders, including the governor of Virginia, uh, described in very cold clinical terms uh, how he would, in fact, facilitate the murder of a baby that had already been born. Uh, and I want to say personally, as a mother, I'm the mother of five kids. I've delivered five babies. Uh, and the idea that, that we have to say today to mothers all across this country uh, that we've got to describe what the Democrats are doing is really horrific. And, I, and I, I can't even. I, it's it's so horrific. I can't even listen to how she has to struggle through talking about how Democrats want to legalize the killing of babies. I mean, because at first it starts like you know when they're like uh, six months old and one year old, and then all of a sudden you're just killing babies up and through their toddlers and then into their teens. Yeah, I've got a baby killing. All the laws this. that have been passed which legalize murder. Yep. Oh, I'm feminist now. I'm going to kill my first grader. So I can live a feminist life. It happens all the time because the Democrats like it. I mean, she is uh, I mean, just like honestly useless, useless, and she has a consistent. She has a constituency of zero. She literally could not get elected to the House from Wyoming, where her father, the far, former vice president. Uh, was uh, from. I mean, give me a break. I mean, how long? Like, it? how few people can you represent? Well, I mean, she's going to represent, I would say, most likely uh, an audience when she gets some sort of cable gig on MSNBC because it seems to seems to me that they're, as they oust real progressives like Mehdi Hassan, their priority is getting a bunch of former Republicans to come on and be as right-wing as possible they, while, I mean, so Nicole many of those Wallace... People. What, Joe what, Scarborough, Michael people, Steele. One of the, yeah, Michael Steele is one of the guys in the panel show. She's that up next. Be, like Garrett, replacing Mehdi's yeah. uh, time slot. I would not yeah. be sh <laughs> Michael Steele. And, and it's like Michael Steele, Alicia Menendez, and another person. If I'm not mistaken. So like the literal former head of the Republican Party Correct. is going to have former a host Joe. on MSNBC. <laughs> former RNC chair. Yeah. Okay. Um, I also just love in that clip how. This is pre obviously any sort of uh, break with Trump where she's the four, Liz Cheney is the fourth in line in the GOP leadership. She's yes. the House conference chair at that point. And she's doing all of the things of like the Democrat Party. Like, of you know, course. We don't yeah. say she's doing Frank, yeah, no, Trump. she got Frank. Yeah, she's full for Frank Luncified. She's right. doing the exact <laughs> same thing. She didn't have a word to say until like uh, 16 months out. And she's like, oh, maybe I got a shot here. And then realized like she went too far out on the diving board and then had to jump. That's basically what happened. That is the story of, of uh, Liz Lynn Cheney, whatever her name is. And that's also going to be a name of her uh, MSNBC show. The Lin Linz Show. Well, I mean... <laughs> I don't even know my own name. Linz. <laughs> and the Just to make it easier for you. Yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's that can be your suggestion to our MSNBC overlords when you have your weekly meeting with them. Yeah. Weekly? Uh, I'm going to see them in uh, 15 minutes. Oh, sorry.